Good day, I'm Niela J. B. Badais from Basin 1 of Dala, and today I'm going to perform assessment of the gastrointestinal system. Gastrointestinal system is collecting subjective and objective data of the follow of the abdominal cavity. Purpose of the assessment is as part of a comprehensive health examination to explore gastrointestinal complaints, to assess abdominal pain, tenderness, and masses, to monitor the client most oh. operatively. Sequence. The sequence of this assessment is inspection, auscultation, percussion, and palpation. This sequence for the accurate assessment of the bowel sounds delays the more uncomfortable maneuvers to the last and prevents rupture of blood vessel in case there is a presence of neurism. When assessing the abdomen, remember that palpation and percussion are contraindicated in patients that you suspect of having a diagnosis of an abdominal or aortic aneurysm, appendicitis, and other conditions. Always check for contraindications before beginning an abdominal assessment. Before doing our procedure, we should ask as first the health history of our patient so miss clayanne when did you when is the la your last bowel movement um last night last night how about your last menstruation uh just a week ago do you feel any pa pain and discomfort in your stomach i don't have okay thank you now let's proceed to the procedure now what we're going to assess the gastrointestinal system. First, we need to introduce ourselves to the patient and we need to ver verify our patient's name. This is to make sure that we are going to perform the right procedure to the right patient. Okay, Miss, good morning. I am Yalaji B. Badai, your student nurse for today. Are you Miss Clay M. Sibalias? Yes, I'm Clean. How are you feeling today? I'm fine. Thank you. Then we need to prepare the necessary equipment we need to save time, energy, and effort. Equipment needed are stethoscope, small centimeter ruler, marking pencil or pen, and a small pillow, towels, and a, or a small blanket. Then we need to wash our hands. This is to reduce transmission of microorganisms. Then we need to instruct our patient to avoid prior to procedure to eliminate bladder distension and interference with any occurrence examination. And then we're going to expose the area from the epigastric area to symphysis pubis while providing the maintaining privacy. And we need to state the sequence of steps in assessing the abdomen, which is the inspection, auscultation, palpation, and percussion. And give the rationality for this. This sequence is for the accurate assessment of the bowel sounds, delays in more uncomfortable maneuvers to the last, and prevents rupture of blood vessels in case there is a presence of aneurysm. Now let's proceed to inspection. First, we need to identify the four abdominal quadrants and the organs located within each quadrant. By thinking in anatomic term, we will be reminded of the resides in a particular quadrant and therefore what might be identifiable during both normal and pathological states. So this is the right lower quadrant. Located in this area is the appendix, circum, portion of the ascending colon, white ovary, right ureter, right spermatic cord, and the lower portion of the kidney. Then right here is our right upper quadrant. Located here are the gallbladder, duodenum, right lobe of the liver, head of the pancreas, right adrenal gland, part of the right kidney, a portion of the ascending colon, and the portion of the transverse colon. And then we have here the left upper quadrant. Located in this area are the spleen, stomach, body of the pancreas, left lobe of the liver, left adrenal gland, part of the left kidney, a portion of the transverse colon, and a portion of the sanding colon. Then last, located in this area is the left lower quadrant, which is composed of a sigmoid colon, 
portion of descending colon, left ovary, left ureter, left spermatic cord, and lower, lower portion of the kidney. Now, let's proceed on inspecting the skin of the abdomen for the following. The color, the venous pattern, and the integrity. This is to observe the normal and abnormal appearance of the abdomen. Now, as what we can see for the color, we don't see any unusual color. The color of our patient is, is fair. For venous pattern, it is normal and the skin integrity is skin is intact and moisturized now let's inspect the umbilicus for the following the position it is in the right position the color is fair or brownish this is to observe the umbilical contour and location any inflammation or bulges suggesting a ventral hernia then we're also going to inspect the abdomen for the following the contour symmetry and surface motion. The contour symmetry and surface motion should be checked carefully to distension and to take note of whether any distension is generalized or localized. Then after that, we will state the normal and possible abnormal findings for each item. But overall, the findings of our patient is normal. Now we're going to auscultate the bowel sound using the diaphragm of the warm stethoscope. Following the sequence of right lower quadrant to left lower quadrant to left upper quadrant to right lower quadrant, we're going to follow a clockwise pattern. Rationally for this is auscultation provides important information about bowel motility. To listen for bowel sound and note their sequence and character, Normal, sound, normal sounds consist of clicks and gar gargles occurring at an estimated frequency of 5 to 34 per minute. While doing this, we should listen to each quadrant for about 1 minute. We will start from at the right lower quadrant for this. This is the junction of the small intestine and large intestine. And this quadrant, the bowel sound is more active. Left lower quadrant. And then the lower left upper quadrant and then last is the right upper quadrant now while and then we're going to identify different types of bowel sound, the normal active, hypoactive, hyperactive, or an absent, which is no sound heard after five minutes. Next is we're going to state the different vascular sounds that may be heard on auscultation in roots, venous hum, and peritoneal friction rub. This is to note the intensity, pitch, and frequency of the sounds. Auscultating from the vascular sounds are especially important if the client has hypertension or if you suspect arterial insufficiency to the leg. Then we're going to locate the different areas where vascular sound may be auscultated. For the brutes, we it is located at the abdominal aorta, frenal, and iliac, and also the femor in the femoral arteries. For the venous hum, it is located in the epigastric and umbilical area, and for the friction rug, it is at the hepatic and splenic area. Now, let's proceed to percussion. Percusses all four quadrants, no tones, tympanic, tympany and dullness, and an up and down manner starting from the left lower quadrant. 
Taking note on timpani and dullness, percussion helps us to assess the amount and distribution of gas in the abdomen, possible masses that are solid or fluid-filled, and the size of the liver and length. Timpani usually predominates because of gas in the gastrointestinal tract, but scattered areas of dullness from fluid and feces are also typical. Now, we're going to start percussing at the left lower quadrant. Now we start percussing at the left lower quadrant. Then the right lower quadrant. <laughs> right upper quadrant. Then the left low upper quadrant then we will because and measure the liver span at the midline clavicular line or MCL and the mid sternal line MSL MCL percuss at the level of the umbilicus at client in the mid clavicular line and percuss upward until we hear the dullness we will mark at this point percuss from the lung resonance in the right MCL to dullness and mark. We should measure with a small ruler or tape measure for nor normal liver span MCL is 6 to 12 cm and MSL repeat the MCL procedure. The normal liver span MSL is 4 to 8 cm. This is to assess for the size of the organ. Then we will percuss the spline at the left mid axillary line. Here between the sixth and the tenth rib, tenth rib, and percuss for dullness by percussing downward in the left left mid axillary line, beginning with the lung resonance until we hear the splenic dullness. And we will ask the client to inhale deeply and hold breath. Okay, could you please inhale? Okay. Could you hold your breath? Okay. Normal splenic dullness is 7 cm. Then we will percuss the kidney using kidney punch. We will place a flat part of the left palm on the area of the 12th drip. And then punch back using the right fist. We should repeat on the left side, placing the palm slightly higher than the right side. We will place the flat part of the left palm on the area of the 12 rift and then and then punch the back using the right fist. We should repeat the left side placing the palm slightly higher than the right side <laughs> left side Next is palpation note that the palpation should not be performed because of the risk for an injury but they should be able to demonstrate how it is performed for palpation we sh should state the purpose of light palpation Light palpation is especially helpful for eliciting abdominal tenderness, muscular resistance, and some superficial organ masses. For this, we will lightly palpate all four quadrants using the pad of the fingertips for tenderness, consistency, and masses. Now we will start at the right lower quadrant. We just lightly. Do you feel any pain? No, Just no. tell me if you feel uncomfortable or you pain any pain, okay? Okay. So there is no tenderness and any masses. We start at the upper right quadrant. Then the left upper quadrant. And the left lower quadrant. Apology. 
will state the purpose of deep palpation. This is usually required for delineate abdominal masses. Then we will identify the improper placement of the hands for liver palpation. Stand at the client right side. Then we will identify the proper placement of the hands for liver palpation. We will stand at the right stand at the client right side and then locate the 11th and 12th ribs and then place right hand parallel to the right coastal margin and place our left hand under the client's posterior ribs then ask the client to breathe deeply while the hand at the back will push the right hand compresses upward and inward with our fingers okay could you please breathe deeply okay while well, i'm doing this Okay, inhale again. Thank you. Normally, normally liver is not palpable. Then we will identify the proper placement of the hands for spleen palpation. We will stand at the client's right side and reach across client to. We'll stand at the client's right side and reach across client to place our left hand under the client's posterior lower ribs and then push up client's right hand below the margin as the clients to breath deeply and press hands together to palpate this plan. Okay, could you please breath deeply? Okay. Thank you. And normally, spleen is not palpable. Now, let's proceed to special maneuvers. We'll perform the following special maneuvers for our sites. Let's proceed to special maneuvers. We will perform the following special maneuvers for ascites. First, we will mesh. These special maneuvers are used to detect build-up or fluid in the space between the lining of the abdomen and abdominal organs, the peritoneal cavity. We we'll measure the abdomen girth using a, the same rule, the fluid wave test, shifting dullness. Then we will perform the following special maneuvers for appendicitis, round tenderness, piso sign, and or obturator sign. These special maneuvers are carefully performed to confirm the presence of inflammation of the appendix and perform special maneuvers for cholecystitis. This Morphe sign, useful tool in establishing diagnosis for inflammation of the gallbladder, and then perform tests for asterisis to check for an abnormal tremor consisting of involuntary jerking movements, especially in the hands, frequently occurring in the ependal hepatic coma and other forms of metabolic encephalopathy. That's all for assessment of gastrointestinal system. Thank you.